Welcome to Renaissance Charge Videos. I'm Rick Friedrich. Today I ask the question, what is free energy? Or well, how do we define it? So I just had somebody write a negative comment uh, with uh, that I delete. I always delete not negative comments, but bad attitudes. Uh, we more than happy to engage somebody if they're going to talk appropriately. I don't tolerate any bad language, but we're going to talk about what is free energy. They were criticizing my fan presentation, saying you got to show free energy if you're going to make a claim of free energy. And I say you don't understand free energy, um, so let's look at what free energy is, real briefly. So we have a wind generator. That needs a whole lot of wind to produce a little bit of light on this thing. Kind of a joke. Um, if I freely receive wind airflow without me paying for it, that's free energy. Everybody knows that, believes that, end of story. But when it comes to something that's not conventional, suddenly they don't believe in the wind. If it's a different kind of wind, different kind of energy source. So, I had showed a previous model of our fans in the past, which is where we probably should have started out showing people some free energy and not as much um, all at once, so that they could at least appreciate some free energy. Now, people will call that greater efficiency, but it's not really. When I was getting 15% more out from the fan at the same RPM, you could say that's more efficient, but it's not really the way under people understand efficiency. Efficiency, in their sense, would be that which is in the realm of possibilities. So in other words, you get some be better bearings, you get some um, better parts that are more efficient, then you'll get better performance out of the, the fan. That's not what we did. We simply moved around the parts that existed. We took the diode out and moved it to another location. In fact, we added another diode just because there was two transistors in it. But then we got the same output mechanically, the same CFMs out of the fan, while we got 15% more energy in charging. Now it actually ran a little bit faster and drew a little bit less energy, so a little bit more than that. That was just by changing one part around. And it was done in a way that's not conventionally done. And it's assumed that that would never do any good. Like we couldn't do anything useful with that energy, that negative energy. So I've been showing this for 17 years now. And there are billions of these fans out there, and yet, Nobody's doing this but me. Well, there's a couple people who copied me, but I'm talking about the industry. So according to industry, it's not possible to get that 15% more. Now with this fan, we're getting a whole lot more out than that simple modification. We have a whole different uh, circuit in here, and we've unwound the wire, one of the wires, and rewound it, doubled by filer, and so forth. But now we're getting more or less one-to-one -one charging, as I mentioned. Now that will depend upon the condition of your batteries and your environment and so forth, size of the batteries too. And But if you just get anything more than what you normally get, that's free energy. And you gotta come to grips with that. So people, you know, arbitrarily define uh, what they mean by their words. And that's fine, you can mean whatever you want to mean. But if you want to communicate with the rest of the world, you have to use things consistently, use words consistently. So I wanted to just draw attention to that um, briefly. Two and a half years ago, I was on overunity.com and I made a video about this at the time where I said you cannot prove overunity claims over the internet. You cannot prove or disprove them through the mirror, mirror internet 
because you need to be in the real world. People can only do science and prove truths in the real world. Digital world is not the real world. And um, it can be faked, it can be misunderstood. You're perceiving through it. So I showed a big demonstration of all these, fa of all these coils running, being power powering LEDs and all that. And everybody was like, wow, it's a big demonstration. And I was saying in the video, you cannot prove anything by this. Now you can take that, try yourself in the real world, and convince yourself. But you cannot convince another person of anything. You can show them, enlighten them to something, but they have to willfully uh, fixate on it and admit a point to themselves. And nobody can do that for them. So I think a lot of people, a lot of you followers want to try and prove to skeptics something. And I've dealt with skeptics for a very long time, over 30 years. I was one myself, and I'm talking about a bad skeptic, not someone who is truly critically minded, but somebody who is looking to disprove things he didn't want to believe. Um, and that's usually for moral considerations. So what happens is people are trying to prove to a friend or somebody else, and they can't. You can't prove it to them. Because they already either know the truth and they're not willing to admit it or they don't want to go there in their minds, right? So you have to come to grips with that. You don't have, it's not your place to try and do something it's impossible for you to do. And I can't prove something over the internet that can never be proven over the internet. I show people what I do, they can do it themselves, I've got thousands of satisfied customers, at least with the product. I have it always shipped as fast as I would like to and as people would like, and that's my fault. That's not the technology's fault. Um, at any rate, we're doing our best. And here's just a little product that we just did. I'm not gonna do a separate video on this, but we made these riser stands that connect up to these coils because we, we made the coils cheaper in order to uh, make them more affordable for people by taking the base off. So this allows, this is going to be part of the resonance kit too, which will be the next video I talk about today. So thanks for watching. <laughs>